let's jump onto this one, yeah? So, didn't I tell you guys prior that Brian Callan's a little bit of a dum-dum in terms of how he's approaching these allegations? And this is coming from a fan, right? I'm a fan of T5K. I'm a fan of Callan. I'm a fan of what they've done and how they've built up their brand and built their careers. Um, and just, you know, I think, you know, especially in Brian's case, he's definitely better when he's around other comedic um, giants in the podcasting space, right? Some of those Chris D'Elia and Wolf Sasso podcasts will go down in history, especially the early 10-minute uh, podcast stuff. But some of those sessions where they sit down on the phone, the kid have been easily one of the best. I think I think that might actually be the most viewed video on the Fire and the Kid channel, the one where Brian Brendan wasn't around and it was just Chris D'Elia, Will Sasso and Brian Kellen. It was an infamous one where Chris D'Elia went, oops, do you remember that one, right? That was the one, right? Oh no, no, oops. Is, the, um, is it though? Right, that, yeah, that was the one. That was flipping like legendary. So I'm a big fan of his, right? But I've had a real issue of how he's dealt with these sexual assault allegations or especially the more kind of serious allegations of rape. I think he's dealt with it in a really poor way and it's really kind of encapsulated or really put a cherry on the top of a really disastrous year for Callan from, you know, separating with his mother of his children to getting the eyelid surgery to securing his own show or well, to securing the, you know, what well, to securing a role in the show, getting a spin off, the spin off getting cancelled being a COVID denier um, and then you know suddenly now being embroiled and again COVID denier throwing his friend Chris Delia under the bus to pretend like he doesn't know him not backing him up in public and then suddenly he's embroiled in his own sexual assault scandal which if on paper is actually more serious of, of an offence than what Chris is being alleged to have done Chris is alleged to have been a bit of a dog and tried to holler at everything that moved that you know in states that he was visiting but apart from that it doesn't really seem that bad if you look at it on paper right he didn't sexually assault anybody he was maybe indecent and creep in some respects depending on what account you remember or what account you believe i think there was one about indecent exposure but you know if we have to grade a level of nastiness i would say potentially raping somebody and maybe whipping at your piece because you're trying to be too forward i say the rape definitely you know um, oversees the whipping at your piece i mean the whipping at your piece is still a problem don't get me wrong but you know the point remains i've not really been a fan of how he's kind of dealt with all the issues and I guess I've been vindicated somewhat because now, um, especially prior to the prior prior video that I made about um, basically, what did he say? No, yeah, so Brian Callan said in one of his earlier videos that I played um, of, of, I think, the yeah, an update of his show, the Brian Callan report, he mentioned that how he was going back on tour. Um, he was going to launch that Bookless Book Club and he was also going to go on tour. And I said it was ill-advised. I don't think that was a good idea because as much as I commend his attitude to be like, hey, I did nothing wrong, so I'm going to go try and live my life, right? I'm going to go try and put food on the table, you know, um, you know, help out my family, you know, I've got to provide for my kids, my family, you know, whatever payments he has to make, whatever he has to do in his life, he's, he's within his right to try and make the best of a bad situation. But unfortunately, in the era that we live in, the world that we live at the moment, if you're accused of such a crime, you have to clear your name before you can go around trying to... Um, go about your life you know regular or, or kind of resume your everyday life you just can't do it with the allegations over your head because guess what happens especially if you're a comedian if you decide to go on tour and you announce the dates because you want to sell the tickets and sell it out because you know brian Callan isn't louis ck unfortunately he needs to advertise these shows ahead of time for people to go out and buy the tickets what's going to happen is that the detract the you know, detractors if you're according to dsp but whatever the, the people that don't like you the, and the people that think you're guilty they're going to make it their mission to cancel you or to cancel the shows that you're appearing on to send you a message that hey by the way we still think you're a bad person we still think you did this really heinous crime and if the court system can't punish you we're going to punish you by canceling your ability to make a living that's what cancer culture is effectively is and for some reason brian thinks cancer culture doesn't affect doesn't apply to him i don't know why that is i don't know why he's approaching it this way i don't know whether or not his friends aren't talking to him and they've sort of left him to do on his own but i generally think it's a bad idea idea and again i've been proven right because now we have this article from a place called pajab pajiba and they've basically gone in on him like sonic right and the article says the following alleged rapist brian Callan is touring and jen kirkman is understandably outraged jen kirkman i guess is one of the um women in the scene that was kind of leading the charge in terms of getting men in the comedy scene to sort of um 
own up to their mistakes to hold their other male comedians accountable and she's generally just been you know lighting the fire um underneath the asses of some of the people that have been accused and just basically being the person that's like hey i don't forget what's happened right so she's basically the sworn enemy of some of these uh stand what you call it comedy store comedians who just want to carry on and just you know ignore it and uh, pretend like nothing happened which i guess again are never good nor bad but i just think if you're the one that's being accused of doing such a heinous crime you need to clear your name because if you don't someone like a jen kirkman is going to make it a mission to make sure everyone knows exactly what you did and to stop any kind of possibility for you to kind of advance or to move on from it because you know whatever so the article is following it says in further evidence that power of counter culture is widely overhyped that's not true at all because he's still cancelled he can't go to his own show this is the thing i hate about some of these people right Again, I don't I don't think cancel culture is a good thing in general, but I understand the premise. I understand that sometimes there is such a heinous crime that's committed that there's no way of somehow, you know, maybe um, the time has elapsed. Maybe there's no way of gathering actual real evidence. But if there's no way to actually have somebody, you know, be convicted and be thrown into a prison because they did something to really heinous back in the day, the only way that you can get some kind of reprisal is to effectively, quote unquote, cancel them, right, for whatever career that they have. Because for some odd reason, like, um, who's the, who, what quote does that come from? I'm going to say it was an economist. He said something like, the worst always end up on top right who is it by i remember this quote it always pops into my head whenever i think of something so the worst uh the worst make it to the top who's this by it's a quote by hayek right yeah it's a famous quote by hayek there we go i got it here because that's, that's what generally happens that's why cancel culture works because usually the worst type of people definitely do make it to the top according to hayek here right let me quickly put up this article it says hayek uh, was right the worst do get to the top that, 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 that inspired the freedoms of remarkable global response in recent years from the collapse of the Soviet Empire to the growth of privatization. There is no sign yet that social assassinists with silly and destructive schemes. The express explanation uh, of why and how such people get in positions of power is still found in the wider worst get on top, which is a chapter 10 of F.A. Hayek's masterpiece, The Road to Serfdom. So if that is a truth and we are to believe so, I'm not I'm not mad at cancel culture if you're going to try and get somebody out of the paint because that's the only way you've got to do it. But to say it's overhyped isn't true because he's a, his career has been cancelled somewhat. He can't go on his own show. His best friend Joe Rogan, who has the biggest show on the planet, doesn't ever mention him. His friends don't talk about him because they don't want any of that mud to be placed onto them. He's officially been, you know, ostracized from his own community. Um, he's lost any kind of meaning, any kind of way of making an income. That is cancelled. So it's not overhyped. Let's continue. Um... Brian Cannon is still touring comedy clubs uh, in weeks after four women accused him of sexual misconduct and accused sexual assault. The former Goldberg star and Chris Alia Cohort, who promised fans he would not lay low, is currently listed as to appear at several clubs in the coming weeks follow a uh, fellow comedy and stand-up, um, Jen Kirk, who's understandably outraged. And I mentioned it in my video prior about the Booklist Book Club. It was a really ill-advised for him to announce he's going on tour. You're not going on tour. No one wants to see you. You should be trying to bloody... Um, clear your name as opposed to going on tour this is not the again it's, it's just so sometimes i want and, and this, that, that's why i really do think as much as people like to rag on brendan he's the best thing to happen to brian callen without brent brendan like brian would be i don't know where he'd be in his career right now he's a great stand-up comedian but the, his moves that he makes are just so i don't know man for for as smart as he can sound sometimes he really does do things in a really dumb way and now look he's being essentially you know all these gigs will definitely get cancelled by the end of the week if this carries on. If Jen keeps, if Jen keeps retweeting and sharing what she's sharing on social, his his tours are done, right? He's going to be completely over, and then he's going to be, you know, ranting and raving on his show about something else later. But hey, says the marvelous Mrs. Maisel writer Jen Kirkman, as you can see here, she's got that look in her eye. She's definitely determined. Um, took to twitter to call on male comedians to be allies they claim they all are and call out the clubs who are booking these alleged rapists there's a quote from her um on twitter it says dear male comedians i'm out of fucks you've let us all down again remember three months ago when you wanted to help to change the culture we still see you you're either afraid or don't care these are the two options now that's unfair to be honest if you went to help when it happened right when it was so fresh i get the sentiment but now it's not really your business if you're not involved in this um you didn't do anything wrong um you're kind of you know essentially we're all going through a global pandemic you've probably got your own worries your own things you need to look after it's actually the responsibility of somebody like a jane kirkman who is um pretty prominent uh voice of 
uh, displeasure when it comes to some of these actions from some of the bigger people in the comedy scene in LA. So she should use her platform. She's verified. She's got a Netflix special. Like it's good enough what she's doing. And her and her friends sort of sounding the alarm and let people know, hey, this is not um, acceptable. But to expect other people who aren't involved in this who don't have any skin in the game who don't have anything to do with it whatsoever if anything they're probably in a really macabre you know up in a really selfish way they're probably waiting for everyone to sort of like kill each other so that they can have spots that they can go and appear on like that's probably the main um, name of the game but let's hear what just say to you regardless a few months ago i wrote like 85 point thread about how you can help change the culture of sexism in comedy now i don't know if it's because the pandemic's still going. It doesn't really seem like there is comedy. Well, what a great time to help rebuild it and change the culture. Now that clubs are really struggling, like you do have a little bit of power here. So mm, the power thing again, like if we do want to, if we want to address these things, there's let's not, let's not be pointing at each other. Let's instead work together. Right. I guess again, I'm not a comedian. I don't know anything about none of this stuff, but I would assume the best way to kind of get people to be on your side is to not chastise them in public. You probably should be trying to get them on your side by maybe encouraging them, maybe trying to convince them, maybe trying to empower them, maybe trying to make them your actual ally instead of being your attack dog, whatever it is. But I don't think this approach is the best way. Again, from the outside looking in, I don't know what's going on in there. By the way, male comedians, I knew you would never do anything about it because you're all really afraid because you've all always had each other and you've always thrown the women under the bus, even the alternative comedians. Like, I don't think that's fair either. I don't think they throw anyone. I think they throw everyone under the bus as proven with Chris Lear and Brian Callen. LA seems like such a cut for a place to be in. Entertainment in general, I'd assume, you know, actors, comedic actors, stand-ups, improv they're just 10 a penny in la in california or in america or in the world right everyone's funny everyone not everyone's funny well a lot of people can be funny a lot of people are really good at what they do in that mode of funny so when they get out to hollywood and the opportunities are even more limited than they are anywhere else in the world because there's only a certain amount of spots that people can take it's no surprise that people are going to be a little bit backstabby and only look after their own self-interest and sort of throw their own friends under the bus. So if Brian Kellen's quick to like dismiss that, you know, to it's quick to kind of make it seem as if he doesn't know Chris and say that they don't tour together. He's never seen him do anything bad because they don't ever go on tour. And then all these pictures of, of him and Cal of him and Delia get erased from his stream, from his feed. You shouldn't expect him to suddenly, you shouldn't expect people of that ilk to then stand up for women that they don't know who have gone through a who have alleged something that they can't prove it's not going to happen if they can't back their own friends right in you know again serious allegations don't get me wrong but if they can't back their own friends what makes you think they're going to back you but again that's what i mean like you have to this whole chastising thing is a little bit of a bad tactic in that regard these guys are just you know they're a bit what no not lily liver they're a bit they don't have any backbone, so you can't really suggest that in that regard. I think, again, if they, she's got the platform, she's got the connects, she's blue checked mark, she's got a special on Netflix, like, you're doing a pretty good job in that regard yourself. You don't need to cajole guys who probably don't give a fuck about it, what actually what's going on in general, to be completely honest, to try and get on your side. They're not going to help in any way, shape or form. I don't think so. Guys, we see you. We've always seen you. I'm out of fucks to give at this point, and I'm batshit crazy from this pandemic, so I don't care. I don't care if all a comedy goes. I, I just don't care. I don't. She doesn't care if all comedy goes, but then she wants people that have the power to readdress the balance. I don't care if I'm liked. I don't care. So I'm just having fun writing on the Twitter of clubs that book rapists, even if their clubs are owned by people that I perform for. I, you're just adding your opinion. I'm not trying to get anyone's dates canceled, but. Mm, yeah, you are. Again, this is the thing with this issue. So many people cancer culture does exist it's not overhyped and if you are going around at in clubs or people that you think shouldn't be playing at places you're obviously doing it with the intent of getting their gigs cancelled now do i think it's the right way to go about things probably not but i understand the sentiment i get it if you can't charge this guy for the crime that he allegedly did right then the best way to attack this person is through their pocket right that's the only way that they're going to quote unquote learn listen and that's the only way you're going to kind of get your message across i get it but to make it out to seem to make it out to be like anything other than cancelling somebody and making sure they don't have a living is a little bit disingenuous it is what it is isn't it you know you have to sleep with your you, you, that's the thing you have to go to maybe they, may, maybe they're just convinced like i said maybe they're just convinced that they're doing something um fundamentally right because that's just maybe the case isn't it they're just convinced that this is what i'm doing is the right thing regardless of if it because in general if you think about it cancelling Brian Gallen, right 
his gigs is essentially um, removing his ability to provide for his family, removing his ability to support his uh, mother of his children, removing the ability for him to pay for his kids to go to school, right? So it's affecting people that have nothing to do with the, with the allegations that he's, with the crimes that he's been accused of. And again, you know, if you want to get metal with it, it's effectively, a, you know, it's affecting a single mother, right? Somebody that's already going to find it difficult to, you know, um, keep a roof over her head in California with two kids. You know, like, it gets a bit weird when you really think about Why it. Why not? Like, clubs already have stopped tweeting about how Brian Callen's coming to town because I was so annoying. And then customers joined in because they're like, we don't want to support something like this. Now, I'm not saying take his data away. I'm just saying add your voice because clubs always say we free speech and we love, you know, the, the, doing what the marketplace wants. Hey, if the marketplace wants to see a guy with his dick out, we book him. Well, does the marketplace ever speak up the other way? No. But male comedians, you could just simply tweet like, oh, it's not that. Well, that, that makes that's a good point. I think that was when everyone was t getting on. That's uh, OK. <sighs> I get the I get the complaints. People were complaining that some remember when Lucy K was going through he was going through and he was popping up in certain clubs. So he, I think he popped up in some places and of course naturally some people were upset because they were like, Hey, I didn't pay to see this guy. I be, I believe he's a creep. I don't I don't condone anything that he did and I don't think he should have a career, blah blah blah. Get him out of my space. So they naturally they naturally got upset and they had every right to be upset, right? Because if you pay a ticket to see someone and then some other guy you don't like pops up, you're gonna be pissed off. So then clubs changed their tactic and decided to announce that he was coming and then it was up to the market to decide that our customers whether or not they wanted to pay to see him or not. And you know, of course, with um Louis C. Louis C. K. star power and the fact that in my opinion he was pretty much a degenerate on the stage anyway a lot of fans kind of thought that they knew who he was so they weren't surprised by whatever he was alleged to have done and maybe some people formed their own opinion about the story and maybe thought he didn't do anything bad anyway but whatever the case is they decided to buy tickets and saw that his shows wherever he went and that obviously rubbed the people the wrong way so that's the issue the issue for me isn't that what she's saying is partly true but I think the issue is that if the market decided Brian Callen was, if the market said we want to see Brian Callen, they sold out the show, she would still be annoyed at the comedy clubs putting them on. So that's why you have to pick your battles a little bit. Because I think you can't really blame the comedy clubs for putting on a big comedian who hasn't been charged for anything, right? Let's just, let's just get down to being accused of something is one thing, but he hasn't been charged in the court of law. Nothing's been proven. They're all allegations from the time being. They're heinous. They're really bad. And if, if again, it, I'm I'm a Brian Callan fan. I still think he should lay low. He shouldn't be trying to put on shows. It's in bad taste, right? He has some really heavy allegations over his head. He should be trying to clear his name. He should be trying to make amends. Whatever he should be doing, he shouldn't be trying to go and tell dick jokes on stage. It's, this is not the time. But if the market does decide that they want to see him and they think it's okay because he hasn't been charged with anything, then you have to let them go and see him too. You can't then go and carry on phoning up the, the place calling in bomb threats picketing out the, outside the club that's taking it too far you made your you made your stance you made your opposition um clear people know where you stand you just kind of move on but again knowing this whole issue the whole problem for me in this isn't jen isn't what these women are saying it's fundamentally brian callan he should have never announced he's going on the tour it just doesn't make any sense like why is he going on tour with these allegations are still hovering over his head like it doesn't make sense. He's his own best friend in Joe Rogan isn't mentioning his name ever again on on air or in his own podcast, especially now he's on Spotify. And now he thinks it's best to go on stage. And now look, he has fucking articles being written about him and Jen Kirkman committing a minute and a half and multiple Twitter threads about him and what he's going through. It's just a very very poor decision making in his in his. Cool. Eyes. And then you could listen to the Jackie and Lori show and find out like what exactly is not cool about it when the whole staff has to be around someone that's been accused of rape. But you guys always ask how you can help and then you never do it it's so funny but i know you're busy taking down trump and that makes you feel like you're doing but again i don't i think it's unfair like people people have their own careers to look after is what it is let's move on with the article so i said back in june kirkman offered a lengthy thread with action items that stand-ups could take to help uh make the shared work environment safer for female colleagues again these are things that probably need to be done uh, in the long term with a bit more cooperation with less kind of finger pointing again that's probably another story for another day we continue and then it says um only one male ally who is doing the work is Gab gabriel tigerman husband of Catherine fior tigerman that's what lady that accused J uh, brian Callan of rape in 1999 and again this is the issue if, you, if i remember the story correctly again amy kuffman was a little bit loose with some of the fiction but 
uh, if I remember correctly, they did kind of allude to the fact that he might have roofied her, allegedly, right? So if I'm being accused of something like that, like, this is not the time to be announcing shows. It's not the time to be trying to launch secret pod, like, Patreon podcasts. You know what I mean, you're going to try and clear your name so you could go back to do what you're doing before at the level you're doing it. Like, you know, sitting in some nondescript studio with a wobbly table doing conspiracy theory podcasts with somebody that you didn't probably speak to that much prior in in sam tripoli who's been an absolute gent in terms of how he's backed him in public he's probably again sam tripoli doesn't know brian Keller as well as flipping joe rogan does and he's backing him more than he is so it's like oh yeah yeah man if all the things again anyway let's continue um looking over the uh, websites for the club listed above reveal some interesting details the helium comedy club chain um, not only has kind of performing but also has promoting his appearance for, from the shane gillis uh who might remember again boot from Saturday Night Live again see look who just his own surface action is getting Shane Gillis's name get thrown in the mud the Kansas City Improv is also has Callan's show promoted on its main page Addison Improv has him listed on the calendar for the end of October meanwhile the Bricktown Comedy Club seem to have scrubbed Callan's name from their website already one so one place has already knocked him off a google search of his name Brian Callan turns up there below she says, however, if you click the link, it takes you to the main page where Khan is not listed. On the date shown in Google Preview, no Khan is listed. Still, it's unclear if it's been cancelled or a is laying low until the Twitter storm blows over. Cool. Kirkman and Tiggerman shared their profound disappointment with the men in comedy, saying the following. Kirkman said, thanks for doing this work. Hope you're as disgusted as I am at the male comedians who won't say anything. And I don't even mean friends of Callan. I mean the good guys. Weak. Just fucking weak. But again, what do you expect, right? They don't help you any. Like, LA comedians they're just the worst isn't it they don't the, the friendship doesn't exist they're all trying to protect their own shows protect their own agents protect their own opportunity to get gigs it is what it is so, so to suggest that somehow people that are not involved in it that aren't even their friends are going to somehow jump in to be allies it's just not going to happen they're waiting for the guy to get cancelled completely so they can take his spot at the comedy club Jeremy you know I comedy store that's what they're waiting for and then I guess the husband of Tigman replied to 100% since the day the article came out. My wife and I have been talking about the silence of the male comics, the good ones. It's disgusting, it's disappointing, and it's deafening. Yeah. But again, uh, I don't know. I, I think the onus is on the people that actually give a shit to make the change. If people don't give a shit that don't want to get involved, let, 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 let them be in it. I don't think that's anything. That's not a slight on them in that regard. It maybe might be a slight, but again, it's not really their business. Um she said um okay continue here the article continues says kirkman explained it's up to comedians and comedy patrons to speak up when clubs book alleged abuses of course but then it's also up to the clubs so you speak up you voice your discontent your discontent and then it's up to the clubs to have a final decision if they want to buckle under the pressure and say yeah we're going to take the show off then cool but if they want to continue putting the show on you have to respect that decision too it's heinous it's bad it's whatever it's distasteful but it is what it is um in that regard but again Callan, why did you announce the shows? Why are you going on tour? Why are you not trying to clear your name? Who knows? Um, it continues here. She's 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 going in like she's tweeting a lot here in this article. It says I feel alone. You're asking guys to give a shit and calling stuff out, which means which makes me feel insane. You know, I think I think COVID is probably doing that too. Being indoors so long and just seeing people that probably there's the thing too with counterculture that's really interesting, especially during COVID. When somebody does something as heinous allegedly as what he kind has been accused of and you're seeing them on on your timeline still you're seeing them you know you're seeing his patreon flipping blow up you know thousands of pounds a month being uh pledged to him and his efforts to get back on his fee and you know it must irk you again it's not jealousy it's not bitterness but i can understand that contempt that's going to be brewing when you're somebody like a Jen Kirkman who maybe thinks you don't really have the same opportunities that he has because he's a man, da da da. So this is why I think someone like a Khan should be a little more, more sensitive of the climate, right? And just be a little bit understanding that sometimes it's not even you, it's what you represent that's actually the problem. And the best way that he could have maybe addressed it wasn't to maybe, you know, openly what chastise the cancel culture when the allegations come out I was like well, this isn't cancel culture Callan you're being accused of touching up women when they don't want to be touched up you're being accused of raping some do you know what I mean this isn't cancel culture this is way beyond cancel culture it's like oh he's such a donut man again I'm a big fan of his but he's fumbled this so badly um she said here it's not about um what she said let's uh, continue here she said i'm realizing the mentality of the dudes is that if they can't fix it all 
this second nothing matters mm, that's not really the case a comedy club deleted this excited tweet about Callum coming because about 25 people wrote gross under it and all it took to them is tripping over themselves she continues to say it's not about cancelling comedians or ruining club lives it's about uh, making people who book rapists have to put it up with some uncomfortable feedback of their business decisions that's it it's so much simpler and way funner it's punk rock that then you're making it yeah you can spin it that way but you know it is what it is and if you want to cancel someone cancel them but don't try and make it seem like you know you're doing anything but that be continued here so some communities have responded supporting Kirkman and Tigerman's caused by it in their own voice some person called Frank Kunoff who I'm assuming they're all probably in the same scene because I don't really recognize any of the names they're all probably um improv people who naturally makes sense now because if you listen to Joe Rogan or any of those podcasts from the LA comedy scene they're always attacking the improv people and saying how you know corny and lame they are so it makes sense now that they've been the people actually being accused of the the horrible crimes are the ones uh, from the comedy store the legit comics so it makes sense that these guys are dancing on their graves and it, it completely makes sense I get it and then another person here called May Martin, another person called uh, Gray Delise Griffin, who repeated another tweet that she, I think, made another day when I think the, the story actually leaked about her and a friend going to see Callan, going to a comedy store and then walking out because I saw Callan um, because he allegedly raped one of their mates. And it continues here. Another person, Hob Gentleman. And then I guess the update is that Bricktown already has cancelled his show. Breakdown Comedy Club has confirmed that they've cancelled Callan's booking here. They said this shows have been cancelled. So again, um, the point remains, man, like you can ignore cancel culture as much as you want. You can pretend it doesn't exist, but it's going to come after you, especially if you're not, def especially if you haven't defended yourself adequately. You can't then go about trying to, you know, um, re, re, what you call it, restart your career in any way, shape or form, especially Callan too. He's not, he's not known he's not at that level of fame where he can essentially dictate how things go the way he wants it to go he still needs the benefit of the doubt he still needs you know fans and i don't know if new fans to kind of buy tickets i don't know he just hasn't got that hardcore base like a nikki sorry like a lucy k would have in terms of kind of riding through that storm and again it's his own fault man it's his own issue um he has to kind of sort that out that way again disappointing as a fan because i think you know, his friends probably could have helped him out a bit more. But again, this might be karma for the Crystalia thing because I think that really, and then the COVID denial stuff prior, like it's just all mad karma in it that's maybe coming back at him. I'm not too sure, but hey, let me know what you think in the comments down below, man. Do you think Jen Kirkman's going way too hard? Do you think she's deranged? Do you think she's well within her rights to call up some of her male comedian friends? What do you think a male comedian should be doing? Should they be trying to help out and trying to um, hold clubs accountable? Or is it the responsibility of the people who are actually being affected, i.e. the women, i.e. the allies of these women, to try their best to hold the clubs accountable and to try and kind of create a safer space for comedians uh, within the entertainment industry? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments down below.